welcome to Beyond the Lines. Another Thursday, another coloring drawing going on. Let me show you what I chose for this week. It's the next one in this book here, the Fantasia book, and we're having the crab. I teased that one in the pilot episode. So this was uh, done quite a while ago. Do, 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 do. There you go. They walk funny, so I can hold it funny, can I not? So on this drawing <laughs> or coloring, my focus was on, um, well, how to first of all hold this drawing into frame, <laughs> then, oh gosh, it's goofy, it's hot. Um, having mostly warm colors and having a lot of darks within them in comparison to the first drawing that I did where I had a lot of light colors. This is way darker, way more shaded, way more contrasty in that regard. Though I chose pretty much um, at least 75% of the same colors as I did in the first drawing, the elephant, you remember? So, uh, Check out how I did, why I did it, what I did, what my thought process was and how I do color with certain media. Next week I'm going to move to another book and show you a bit about coloring pencils. So yeah, stay tuned. Here we go. The crab. Uncolored. It's gonna be colored very soon. <laughs> you saw that I finished the coloring. So I'm working with the Faber-Castell Pitch brush pens again and uh, I did choose, like I said, most of the colors that I had already used in the elephant but I left out a couple of colors and uh, took some new ones in. So I did leave all of the blue colors out so no turquoise and blue going on here uh, but I did add uh, skin tones. Uh, the funny thing about skin tones is that they are pretty much a nude or a neutral color most of the times especially with markers um, where you have only so many different tones in a palette. So, oh no, I did take the blues, ha, but only for the tiniest thing. I did not remember that. I'm voicing over this video and it's been, I'd say, four weeks or five before I colored, uh, when I colored this page. So here you can see I take a nude color and a dark indigo. Uh, this, uh, These are the new ones. And uh, a red tone that I hadn't used before, if I remember correctly. But in the end, the turquoise is so minimal that uh, for one, you cannot really see it on screen when you're voicing over this video. And uh, it's not by far not the dominating color in on this page here. So I totally forgot that I had used the turquoise, so like oopsie. But I guess I did. <laughs> As you can see here, the two tones again, a light turquoise, a dark turquoise, and I'm gonna have the light come from the upper left hand side. So I'm shading towards the lower right hand side. And I did take the dark indigo as the third blue tone. It's a very dark, warm blue which fits nicely with the turquoise since they both are warm blues as well. They got a lot of yellow pigment in them and uh, that makes them warm, almost greenish. And this is pretty much all the blue that I'm having on this crab. So I'm having a yellow, an orange, two reds, a brown and a skin tone color. And I'm having two or three colors per section of the crab. And I'm trying to uh, decide what I want to have where, uh, what my main tone should be. And I decided on a warm red. So that's why I'm giving the body of the crab here, a full cover of the warm red as base tone pretty much to work with. 
I said earlier, I'm voicing this over. I decided for upcoming episodes to have the voice recorder with me when I color so that I can explain things and show things right away rather than now <laughs> having to explain them to you without my hands pointing to certain things on a drawing. So I find it might be a bit more clear or helpful to you to have me talking while I color. So that will change with the next video. But the crab here is pretty much the last of the three episodes that I pre-recorded before. I had um, well, future plans for the series and stuff. So they were just the quote-unquote introduction episodes, just letting you watch along me, telling you a few things about what I do there. And um, the quote-unquote tutorials or lessons will only come up in the next few episodes. Well, it's more than a few. <laughs> it's quite a lot of them. I have things in store for you. <laughs> so now that I do have the base coat down, I'm going in with the darker red and this actually is a cold red. The other one that I used before, like I said, was a warm red, but I'm not having a darker shade of warm reds with the pit brush pen. So I have to go in with the cold red to intensify certain things that I want to have darker. It also makes for a nice contrast here. Um, I'm gonna show you next time around what happens when you just use warm colors uh, or just use cold colors, how a drawing or a coloring, a painting, it's the same principle for every kind of visual artwork. What that does to the drawing Though you might shade it extensively, it could look a bit flat. So I like to combine cold and warm colors just to give the page or the drawing a bit of an oomph there. So I like how the cold red, it makes the warm red underneath so vibrant. And I'm using a medium thick paper here. The Faber Castells don't bleed through that paper um, they might in other books but I can work without an acrylic uh, sheet underneath I just can go in and color so then I took a cold brown it's a sepia brown and started adding the darkest shadows of the body section of the crab and having also a few uh, sections darkened up so that other uh, sections pop. So in the middle you have this almost, um, it almost looks like a butterfly that shape. That will pop because uh, of the cold brown, the rest of the upper section of the crab will stand back. So the midsection, that flower or butterfly shape will stand out, it will uh, come to the foreground while the rest of the upper section of the crab will go to the background. And one thing I like to do with these Indian ink markers is layer the base color that I used on top of all the shading and other colors that I used just to bring everything together. And depending on how juicy your markers are, you can manipulate the pigment a bit or um, make it even blend. It's by far not as smooth as you can have results, say with the Spectrum Noirs or the Copics, but for um, that medium, if you compare just one layer, which is like the light red on the lower section in comparison to the upper section where I have three layers of color uh, yeah, it's quite the difference and that is what you can achieve even though you, you're you not using alcohol markers. So I'm just going 
uh, over sections of the crab's body, intensifying colors. Also, you can see on the lower section, it's just one layer and a lot of white peaks through. But uh, the more you layer the ink pens on top of each other, the less white you will see through. Hence, your colors are so vibrant and so, um, well, bright, pretty much, uh, and so saturated that they pop way more than you would maybe expect. You can even intensify that by having colored pencils on top just with a super light hand enhancing shading or using colors that you maybe do not have with uh, your marker collection, whatever markers you are using. You can um, have kind of like a mixed media coloring there and intensify or saturate sections of your coloring even more. And the same goes for all the other visual uh, art any drawings, any paintings, it's the same principle over and over and over again. Um, you can mix your media and have, for one, super awesome effects, and second, which is the more impart important part for me, have uh, contrasts or enhancement of certain sections that you would maybe not be able to achieve with just one medium or you maybe do not have all the markers or the tones of a marker because well <clears throat> some of them are quite pricey or some shades are maybe just not available and uh, you can quote unquote cheat your way and still get the result that you want by, like I said, using colored pencils on top or pastels or whatever it is that you do have in your stack. So while I did, <laughs> just told you all the things that you can do with colors in certain media, meanwhile, I did give uh, the body of the crab, the lower section, a bit more of a shading. Again, I did come in from the lower right-hand side because my light is coming from the upper left. And uh, that means that the shadows are way more prominent and darker and enhanced towards the lower right-hand side of the object. And uh, I did the same thing that I also did on the upper section of the crab's body, going in with the cold red, the cold brown, and then giving the whole thing another layer of my base color, the uh, warm red. And you can see there's no bleeding through. Still with four or five layers of Indian ink, no bleeding through. And my meat markers are, well, they're not brand new. I use them quite the quite a bit so they're not dripping uh, with juiciness but they're still juicy enough to have very smooth layers and still I'm not having any bleed through which is awesome and which is one of the reasons why I do like the Faber Castells in my coloring books at least uh, for that kind of paper. Uh, for the fingers Shears? What's, what are they called? Mm. That section that looks like a hand of the crab. <laughs> to color that, I chose uh, the lightest color that I have, which is a skin tone. And the skin tone that I use, there's three in the box uh, of the Faber Castell. This one is quite a yellowish one. It doesn't have as much red pigment as other uh, skin tones in the box. So I did choose this one with the warm uh, yellow. It's almost um, on the verge of being an orange. And I used that in combination because yellow and yellow makes for a very smooth look. So the yellow, of course, is yellow. And the skin tone is toned or tinted yellow so it will look very smooth in the end just um, 
very very harmonic there this is uh, what i look for when i color if i have tones that are well not next to each other in the color wheel or that um uh, are not <laughs> in the same tone areas in in the sorting boxes for markers or color pencils or whatever i try to have at least the same tint of um, certain tones. So now I'm being super brave. I'm going in with the indigo. Now again, indigo is a warm uh, blue, which means it has not only blue pigment in there, but also others. And one of them is a yellow. Um, at least when it comes to synthetic indigo. I mean, there's Originally, there's, um, I think it was, was it a stone or was it, no, I think it was a root that they got indigo from. Anyway, uh, indigo works super, super well as a shading color for pretty much any other color. It doesn't matter if it's reds, greens, yellows, browns, whatever. Uh, it's a very lovely shading color, so I can take it to even the lightest colored sections and it won't be as harsh maybe as a black or uh, a graphite color. It kind of stands back. It kind of pushes, pushes uh, itself to the background, which is why next to Van Dyke Brown, which is a cold brown, I do love um, indigo as one of my um, shading colors. No matter what medium I work with, uh, a dark blue or a dark brown um, are always my favorite go-tos. As I said, they stand back, they, they are, yes, they're very prominent and, and uh, vibrant colors, but uh, meaning you can really saturate sections with that and uh, you will see that later on the body of um, the crab where the legs connect. I can get really deep, deep, deep dark shades but still they're, they stand back in comparison to the reds or the yellows. So a warm blue or a cold brown are my favorite go-to colors when it comes to having the darkest shadows going on in my artwork and I can feather out the uh, indigo with my skin tone color. I have to clean the pencil a bit in a while just to make sure that I don't keep the indigo pigment on the skin tone uh, pen but you can see how well uh, with I'd say medium to very juicy pens you can smooth out the very dark colors into the light ones and it's still it's it's not looking weird you can't really see the pen strokes you can see them super up close but uh, on the regular viewing distance you can't really see them you just see a shadow so for the sections of the knees so pretty much the elbows I did choose the same yellow that I uh, chose for the hand section and uh, that is because I want to have kind of a gradient coloring going from light to dark with the arms and not having the darkest section next to the lightest one. I want to have kind of like a gradient quote-unquote shading though I'm having different colors and I use a color that I used before so it just makes it more smooth and harmonic. I did a shade with the orange on top and then again I go in with the indigo as my darkest uh, shading color and uh, just go over the well, elbow creases, the lines, whatever you want to call them and then I'm giving uh, the whole thing a solid layer with the yellow that I started out with and it just blends the ink together to the point that it looks like a natural shading but the indigo ink is not getting lost either. So that's one thing that I do like about these uh, pitch 
brush pens in comparison to, say, alcohol markers, which are the Spectrum Noirs, the Copics, the Sharpies, whatever. Um, you can, the, the good thing about the Copics is that you can blend really well, but sometimes you can blend too much if you're not careful. So I do like the Indian ink markers for that point that you can only blend to a certain degree and uh, maybe not too much. You can still have your line work um, pretty much just being feathered out instead of being totally blended. The same goes here for the other elbow. It's quite logic when you see my uh, color choice at the beginning of the video that now the orange would be the part that is the base color. I used it for a bit of shading uh, in this section before, so now I'm using it as a base color. It's the same principle that uh, I also use for the elbow yellow section. And I'm taking the warm red that I used as a base color for the body um, as my first shading color here. And I'm shading um, from the body to the arm because uh, the legs or arms of the crab sit underneath the body shell. Hence the, uh, sh the shadow falls rather harshly on the sections of the arms and legs that are closest to the uh, shaded uh, body part. Off to the next section. Um, I did start with the hind legs of the crab here uh, just to make sure that I do have a bit of repetition there and I'm pretty much going about it the same way as with the arms. Having the lightest area be the skin tone and having yellow for the rest of the leg and then shading the whole thing down pretty much the same way as I did the, the arms. This time around, I'm skipping the orange but going for the warm red instead for the um, more prominent shading there. I'm setting apart the uh, way to color from the arms to the hind legs, but I'm still being very, very similar with the way I color giving the um, colored sections a complete um, coat with the base color, uh, just to, again, blend the ink together and just having, well, different combinations when it comes to, okay, am I gonna skip the orange and go for the red? Or am I going in with the orange? Which makes a very, very subtle differences because those two colors are so close to each other with, with their tone. But it makes a subtle difference and that is fine for me. So now I have the light sections colored of the crab when it comes to the legs and I'm now choosing the tones that I want to have for the remaining legs. These should be way darker than the arms and the hind legs. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go with the orange, the dark red and the indigo for uh, the upper of the three legs on each side. I usually take three tones to color, sometimes it's more 
depending on the size of the section that I color or draw or paint. Again, it's always the same principle that I use. Uh, if I have the tiniest sections, I sometimes even go just with one or two color and depending on how gradient I can apply that color, uh, I might not even need um, more than one tone, but usually or most times it's three tones. And I'm going about it the same way as before, having a base color, having a bit of the darker red in this case for shading and then having the like half of the red shaded section be shaded with indigo on top and then bringing everything together with the lightest color again going over the whole section um, which pulls out in this case the indigo uh, pigment towards the rest of the section makes it very smooth. And that gives your uh, art piece, your artwork, a very, like I said, gradient and smooth way, like a feathered out way of uh, way of a shadow. There, it's not very harsh lines. You can see half of the black section here. I'm coloring on top of the orange with the cold red, which makes it very saturated, very uh, dark poppy, pop art-y. <laughs> and uh, then going on half of the red section with the indigo. Just to enhance the darkest shadows there. For the next leg down, I'm going even darker, dark red, indigo and dark brown. So this is pretty much the darkest leg so far. And I'm using the same principle that I also used on the leg above it. Um, coloring a base coat, having more of a wider section shaded on top and then going in with the darkest shadow. And uh, I did not cut out the thought times of this video. Yes, I did speed them up, but uh, I wanted to show you that um, I'm not just coloring, coloring, coloring or painting, painting, painting. I'm thinking about in between okay, what color combination do I want to have for this leg? What would look suitable? What would look interesting? What would maybe look weird? What do I want to go for? And um, so when you're maybe um, having too many choices or if you're not sure with uh, some color combinations, Think about, the, um, uh, think about them or test them and not go to your painting or drawing right away. There's nobody that breathes down your neck and, and hurries you. Take your time. It, you will, yeah, you will probably like the results better when you uh, had time to think about stuff if you were maybe not sure from the get-go. With this midsection here, I did something only slightly different. I did have the um, the shading section pretty much be the same width, so I'm not having the quote unquote lighter color uh, feathered out as much. Because with the indigo and the sepia, which is the dark brown here, um, being both very dark colors and being both the colors that I use for my darkest shadows, like I say, uh, like I said earlier, um, I did just layer them on top, which made the paper be very saturated with ink. And then I could just feather out that mixed dark shadow way more. It's just uh, very very slight difference 
from uh, the way I colored the leg before. It's just, like I said, very, very tiny difference. It's, it's uh, hardly noticeable, but sometimes I do that uh, when I color very dark sections that I'm going, you can see I'm going pretty much the same width as I went before. It's just tiniest uh, part that is not colored with the indigo. It's like, I don't know, half a millimeter. <laughs> it's a really, really narrow section. And then I'm pulling out that ink with my lightest color, in this case, the cold red. But I'm only doing that when uh, I'm having only very dark shadows and if my mid-tone is closer to the dark tone than it is to the light tone. Only two more legs to go <laughs> and then I'm done. So the thought process here, okay, am I gonna go as dark with the as I did with the mid leg or am I gonna go back to the lighter one that I had on the top of the three leg part? Where do I want to go? Do I want to go super light? And I decided, what did I decide? Super light. Okay, so it's a yellow with both of my darkest shadows. Uh, again, the sepia and the indigo. And again, I'm coloring it the same way as before. And while I do that, let me tell you, the blog post for this coloring will be up tomorrow on my blog, together with all the other artwork that I published this week. So hop on over to my webpage in case you wanna see close-up photos of uh, this coloring page or if you want to know the exact colors that I used, I will uh, write down all the materials, all the numbers of the pens and stuff there. And uh, you can see uh, the exact numbers and names of the pens if you're interested. And if you happen to have the same book, and if you happen to have not colored in the crab yet, I would say it would be a cool idea if you colored it either with if you want to go with the same uh, color scheme or uh, with the colors that uh, you like to color with most maybe or the ones that you hardly ever use and just apply pretty much the same principles and see if you like the way of um, applying depth and um, shadows with the colors that you use. And if you should be uh, so inclined and want to send me a photo of your work, uh, please do so. I would be delighted to see what you made with this page, what you came up with, um, what you maybe tried, or if you um, are maybe a first timer, a really early beginner uh, in coloring and if you well took this video more of a lesson than a show and tell so to say um, and well if you tried to color let me know show the photos if you're not comfortable of showing them in uh, the big forums or on the uh, social media platforms that I'm at. You can always send me an email, send it privately or ask for advice on things. If you happen to like the way I color, paint or draw things, go ahead. I'm, I'm always there to, well, help you out if you have any questions.
Now the only thing to do is have a few very heavy highlights and for that I'm using a white gel pen. I need to have some white reflection in the eyes of the crab just to have things pop a bit. Just very, very little there. And that pretty much is my video for today. Um, trying to find other sections that I want to have a bit of a highlight at. And I like the body section of the crab there. Draws the eye into the middle and then you can pretty much circle around the <laughs> crab with your eyes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions or other comments in the comment section below. And uh, if you happen to like this video, do all the good YouTube stuff. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you as a subscriber. I do have lots and lots of different kinds of art videos for you throughout the week and uh, on Saturdays I have a weekly vlog where I share thoughts and process behind the scenes in the studio as well as other weird things of my life and on Sundays I'm joined by my sweet husband and we talk board games. So have a lovely lovely day, uh, enjoy, maybe you got time to color or something or draw or paint or create something uh, to your, well, liking whatever you like to do as creative stuff. Um, I would love for you to enjoy that time of yours where you could be creative. And uh, we'll see you next week's Thursday, 9 a.m. CET with a new coloring. It's all about warm colors then. Have fun, everybody. Bye.